All right, guys, Jay of Prada Performance. This is something I think a lot of guys don't understand, and I've had a lot of questions on it, and I've seen some issues. So what we're going to talk about is how to set the end play in a C4. And it's a little confusing to people because you have two selective washers. You have one here and one here kind of unusual on this transmission to have two and what you got to do is you're going to set your end play with the metal washer very important set your end play with the metal washer so what I typically do I take this one off I don't put it on I just put my metal one on and I'll put the pump you know, I'll, I'll put the pump in the transmission, and I'll put the input shaft in there, and then I'll do my end play check. Okay? Once I get it where I want it, then what you're going to do is you have to... So you're going to take a measurement, all right? I'm gonna, so I'm going to put a washer back on here. So what I typically do is this. I take my dial caliper... And I go from here on the direct drum down to where it touches that uh, washer surface of the forward drum. Okay, so I get that dimension and I transfer it over to here. And what I'm trying to do here, and then I measure, I should have, I should have some space between uh, this, you know, the plastic washer, okay? So if I measure down, uh, you don't get much, about 10 thou, and that's good. So what you want to have, okay, it's a little bit confusing, but this distance from this surface down to the other surface should be a little bit less than your distance from here to here okay so we've set the end play with the metal washer so then we just adjust this until we have just a little bit more distance from here to here than we had in the drums okay and the reason for it is this I don't know uh, well hang on let me back up for a second and I'll show you that in a second but here's a pump assembly I've put the drums on so you can see and what I want you to understand is okay with the forward drum tight up against the thrust washer just just with gravity here but if you look now watch see see how the direct drum kind of floats okay that's what we want we want to have, I mean, that's got a little bit more float than I like to see, but I wanted to, you know, have extra float there so you can understand what I'm showing you uh, or you be able to see it. Okay, so what you don't want to happen, and I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. If you've ever looked at your forward drum and you look at this thrust washer surface, Sometimes you see a groove worn into it, okay? And if you look here on your direct drum, it's got a very fine, you know, this bushing just has an edge on it. Uh, that's your thrust surface on that rides up against here. So what you don't want, you don't want this thin thrust washer surface to be able to put pressure in here and wear into here over time okay you don't want that to happen and again the way you prevent that is don't set the end play with the plastic washer because that pushes this up tight against the forward drum and will eventually cause that wear you again you want the uh, thrust surface the the major thrust surface to be on this washer not on this okay and that's how you do that and I know that that's been 
a uh, topic of controversy for a lot of people. And man, I don't think the Ford manual even explains that to you. I figured this out over time. I, I've never read it anywhere or been taught that, but this is what I've learned through experience and just, you know, just kind of studying the gear train and things and wondering about this. So, you know, one thing I want to mention, you know, we kind of talk about bearings and goofy places. Like a lot of guys would put a bearing here. Well, <laughs> as I just showed you, we just want this to be able to float. So there's never any thrust load on this surface. No significant thrust load. So there'd be absolutely no reason to ever put a bearing there. Uh, and even this surface, I I think there's some load on it, maybe in reverse, uh, when the planetaries are going the other direction, and they're kind of pushing away from each other. But as far as in any forward gear mode, this doesn't get any load, really. It's just, you know, it just controls the end play is all it really does. So really no need to put a bearing there either. I guess if you were going to put a bearing somewhere, this would make more sense than this. But this is easier to do. And I think a lot of people, I don't know, they do that, but it's probably just because it just looks better. You know, in all honesty, but it's not necessary. It's a waste of time and... Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to get your end play and things. You know, you gotta you gotta do shims and things, and sometimes you might have to machine a little off of something to make it happen. But I mean, if you were to put a bearing here and not really utilize this anymore, that could be done. But the trick is, this needs to be replaced with a bearing, or at least a better. You know, a nice, a wider thrust surface than that little ring. Uh, that's just not going to cut it. And I've seen that plenty of times. So, I've never really figured out a way to do that. Uh, I'm sure there is. I honestly haven't spent a lot of time trying to figure it out because it's just, it's just not necessary. There's no gain. There really isn't. If you understand this, like I just showed you, you really don't have a problem. So, again, set your end play with the the small uh, washer here. Make sure this distance is a little bit longer, you know, 10, 15 thou or so. 5 thou is probably enough than what you have from here to here. And that just allows this, like I showed you a minute ago, this to just kind of float in between the pump and the uh, forward drum. Uh, so that's how that works. That's why you don't need a bearing there. I don't do that. Uh, one thing I will say is become a problem is you can still get a good selection of these. They have stopped making the thicker ones of these and that's become a problem. Uh, I was making little shims that go underneath this. Uh, well, I didn't make them, but I had them made. And I'm out of them right now. I need to get some more made. Uh, we used to sell a selective washer kit for this unit and it had those shims because that's how you got around this problem of having a limited number of these uh, these sizes anymore. And, you know, you can see this thing doesn't even sit flat. You know, there's such... They're such poor quality now. You know, these things are terrible. You know, you kind of got to... Um, I, I take a... Um, you know, I, I put like a metal piece over there and knock it around with a hammer to try to make it flat, you know, because that's, that's unacceptable. So that's just something you have to do now. It's unfortunate the quality went to hell on those. Uh, like a lot of things, but... Anyways, uh, that's how you set your end play. Uh, may seem kind of, probably a lot of people won't watch this video thinking, oh, I know how to set the end play, that's easy. But on this particular unit, it's unique, and, and a lot of people screw it up. 
And, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's, you know, knowing the right way to do it helps for sure. So, anyways, uh, that's all I've got on this. So, we'll continue on with this series in another fashion. And uh, appreciate you watching.